In this episode, we're going to look at the genetics of human blood types. Now, the background for this video is actually a picture of what human blood looks like. So, each one of these cells that you see is a red blood cell, or an erythrocyte, which is the proper name. So we're going to start by looking at the different types of human blood that we can have and what it means to be each type. Here's a diagram of red blood cells and it has the four types, uh, common types of blood that humans have. Uh, you can have type A blood, there's type B, there's type AB, and type O, and we'll talk about what the genetics of those mean. Uh, but the first thing that I want us to look at is what we call an antigen. An antigen is actually just a protein that is on the surface of the blood, and it essentially helps your body to recognize uh, what things in your blood belong to you and what are foreign pathogens. Uh, that's a very important because your blood is used as a uh, powerful part of your immune system. You actually have a different type of blood cell called a white blood cell and that helps to fight off infection and things and so it's very important for your body to be able to recognize what belongs in your blood and what doesn't. And so these antigens are basically um, surface proteins on the cell and they help you to detect help your body to detect uh, foreign material inside your body and, and begin to regulate and understand what's common to your body and what's not. And so when we're talking about blood types, if we are blood type A, we have a particular type of antigen that people who are type B do not have. If we are type B, conversely, we have a type of antigen on, our pro, uh, on the uh, surface of our blood cells that people who are type A do not have. Now, because A and B blood are, are, are co-dominant, which we'll discuss in a minute, uh, some people who have type AB blood can have both antigens. Uh, so their blood cells actually have both types of proteins. And then someone who has type O blood actually has none of these antigens. Now, if you're wondering why it's important and what these antigens mean for the individual person, um, this chart right here actually gives you a good indication of that. Uh, we have the various blood types going across the top. We have type A, we have type B, type AB, and type O. And again, the, this shows the antigens on the blood, so the A antigens and the B antigens, and then someone with AB blood having A and B antigens, and someone with O uh, having no antigens. Well, what's interesting is that if you have type A blood, you build up B antigens, in, uh, excuse me, B antibodies. An antibody is a protein that is going to help destroy or fight off things that don't belong in your blood and in your body. So if you are a person with type A blood and you are given, say, in a blood transfusion, maybe you were in a car accident or you have a surgery and you lost a lot of blood, if they were to accidentally give you type B blood, um, then the B antigens in your body would begin to fight that off and you would not recognize that B blood and it could make you very sick. Uh, the same is true if you are type B if you were to accidentally be given type A blood because your body has built up uh, these A antibodies that will begin to fight off um, the A blood. So your body, if, if you have type B blood, your body does not recognize uh, type A blood, and so if you are given it in a transfusion, it could be a very bad thing, make you very ill. If you have type AB blood, what that means is that you have antigens for type A and, and antigens for type B, and therefore you do not build up uh, A or B antibodies. <clears throat> And so you can be given type A blood, and it will be okay for you, and you can be given type B blood, and it will be okay for you. Uh, the last group here that we're looking at is type O, and if you have type O blood, you have no antigens on your blood cells, your red blood cells, and therefore you are going to have A and B antibodies, and so if you are given type A blood or type B blood, uh, you will, your body will reject it. And so we call type O, uh, we typically call that the universal donor uh, is type O. Uh, because what that means is if you're type O, you can give to anyone, but unfortunately you cannot accept from anybody but type O. If you are type AB, we call you the universal, excuse me, if you're type AB, you are the universal 
uh, acceptor. And what that means is that you can accept blood from people who are type A, people who are type B, and people who are type AB, and people who are type O. So let's look really quickly at the actual genetics of uh, these blood types. We're going to start by looking at the four blood types. So, um, and we're going to put um, the phenotypes and the genotypes. So if we want to talk about phenotype, remember a phenotype is what you look like. It's the physical expression of your genes. So the phenotype for um, your blood, you have four phenotypes. You can be phenotype A. You can be phenotypically type uh, B, so you can have A blood or you can have type B blood. You can have type AB or you can be type O. So those are our four phenotypes. Now let's talk about the genotypes for blood. Um, the genotype is your genes, and if you recall, we're always going to have two alleles for every gene because we're going to inherit one from our mother and one from our father. Now what we're going to find um, is that <clears throat> A and B are both dominant to type O. So O is going to be recessive. And so there's two different ways we can be type A. We can be homozygous for type A, and that'll have type A blood, or we could be heterozygous um, with an A and an O, and the O is going to be recessive, and so um, it is going to be covered up by the dominant, which is A. Now, we said A was dominant, but also B is dominant, so if we want to talk about the genotypes for B, we could be homozygous for type B, or we could also be heterozygous uh, with a B allele, and we could have inherited an O allele from a different from a, our parents, and we would still be type B. So we would have those uh, type B antigens on our blood. Now, interestingly enough, uh, A and B are both complete dominant to O, but A and B are co-dominant to each other. So if you'll recall. Uh, Codominance is when both alleles show up. So A and B are both dominant, and when you inherit them together, um, you get both types of blood. So the only genotype for type AB is to have an A allele and to have a B allele. So if you get an A allele from your father and a B allele from your mother, you are going to have both types of antigens, A and B. Now O, we said, is recessive. So the only way to be recessive is to have two recessive alleles. Now there's another way you'll sometimes see these genotypes written. We, we used um, A's and B's and O's, but sometimes you'll see this done with the letter I. And so I want to go over that very quickly. Uh, again, we'll write our four phenotypes down. You can be type A. You can be type B. You can be type AB. And you can be type O. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to write the genotypes down, but we're going to do them with a little bit uh, different lettering system. Instead of just using A's and B's and O's, we're going to use I's. So I'm going to start with type O because we said that O is recessive, and so we're going to use two lowercase I's to represent the genotype um, for being type O. Now again, type O is recessive, so the only way to be type O is to have two uh, recessive, so two lowercase. Now what we have to figure out is, well, how are we going to do the A and B alleles? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use a capital I with a superscript. So to represent an A allele, we use a capital I with a superscript A. Um, to represent a B allele, we'll use a capital I with a superscript B. So if we want to talk about being type A, uh, we could be homozygous uh, for type A, or we could be heterozygous. And the, uh, the upside of using this nomenclature is it's very easy to see that type O is a recessive um, trait and that A is dominant. And so we, we see that by the capital I and the lowercase o. Now for B, we have the same thing. We can have two... Uh, we can be homozygous for B, or we could be heterozygous, having one type B allele and having one type O allele. 
And then again, the only way to be type AB is to have an A allele and a B allele. Now, if we want to think about how this works in a Punnett square, it works just like every other uh, basic Mendelian trait that we've done. Let's say that we have a parent who is heterozygous for type A, um, and they are going to have children with a another parent that is heterozygous for type B. Uh, Punnett square, every all the rules and everything is exactly the same. Uh, so we draw a Punnett square, and we can put one parent on the top, doesn't really matter which, and one parent on the side. And uh, we're going to fill out the Punnett square just like normal. And you can see from this particular cross, we can get all four blood types. We can be type AB, we can be type A, we can be type B, or we can be type O from this cross. And as far as how we would write out the uh, phenotypic ratios, it's just the same as any other cross. We could say that in this case, uh, children, we're going to have 25% are going to be type AB. We're going to have 25% uh, B type A. Now notice I only wrote one A, I didn't write an AO, and that's because I'm writing a phenotypic ratio. And so in a phenotypic ratio, it doesn't matter if I am type uh, if I have two A's or if I have an A and an O, both of those are the same phenotype. They're both type A. Uh, and then I have 25% are going to be type B and then 25% are going to be type O. Let's do um, one more of those. Let's say we have a parent that is type AB and they are going to have children with another parent that's type AB. So again, we can draw our Punnett square. Put one parent on the top, one on the side, and here is the way our Punnett square is going to look when we're finished. And uh, <clears throat> if we want to do a genotypic ratio or a phenotypic ratio, again, it's just the same as doing any, any monohybrid cross. Uh, in this case, the uh, type A that we get is going to be 25%. The type AB probability is going to be 50%. And then the probability of getting a child that is type B is, of course, going to be 25%. So that's the easy part. Now let's talk really quickly about one other thing uh, in blood type. Because if you've ever heard of people in blood type, you, you probably not, haven't really heard of somebody being uh, just type A. You've probably heard of somebody being type A positive or somebody being O negative. And you're probably wondering exactly what that means. Well, the positive and negative is a, a complete dominant trait. So positive is going to be uh, dominant and therefore negative is going to be the recessive trait. And where that comes from, we, we actually call this the RH antigen. And we get that from these little guys right here. Uh, the rhesus monkey is actually where we get the, the RH stands for rhesus, and this trait was first discovered in the rhesus monkey. And so uh, that's why we call it the RH antigen. Now, this is an important trait to study, especially in uh, childbirth, um, because it can cause some problems um, uh, in dealing with childbirth. So, in this diagram here, it shows you that you have a man that obviously is a, uh, has positive, uh, positive for the RH antigen, which means that, that he has it, and then you have a woman that is negative. And so, it's quite possible that she could have a baby that is positive. So she is negative and the baby is positive. And essentially what happens there is there are cells from the baby that enter the mother's body. So the mother is negative, but yet she gets these cells in her body that are positive. And what that causes is her to produce antibodies against, in other words, antibodies to fight the positive blood cells. Now that doesn't cause a problem in a woman's first pregnancy, but what can be a problem is let's say in her second pregnancy she actually has another baby that is positive, then her body can actually attack and fight off the child. 
Um, and so there's actually a shot that they that they uh, give mothers in this situation after her first pregnancy that can prevent this from happening. But it's obviously something that um, <clears throat> doctors need to know uh, as far as what the blood type of a father is and what the blood type of the mother is and, and what the blood type of the baby is uh, um, to uh, prevent complications. So if we want to look at the blood types and the Rh antigen uh, in unison, that is going to be what we call a dihybrid cross, which we've done before. And that's just where you're looking at two traits at once instead of one. So let's say we have a person who is um, homozygous for type A blood, but they are heterozygous for A positive. So in other words, they have two A alleles and they have a positive allele for the Rh antigen and they have an allele that's negative. And let's say that they have a child with somebody who is um, heterozygous for type B blood. So they have a B allele and an O allele. And remember the O is recessive. And let's say they are also heterozygous for the Rh antigen. So they have one positive and one negative. Um, there's a couple ways to do this. You can, if, if you want to, you can draw the big Punnett square that actually has 16 squares in it. And we can, you know, associate, you know, we do the first with the first with the first and then the first with the second. And, and we, did, we distribute and come up with um, the different possible gamete combinations and so forth and so on. And when you're finished, it will look like this. And you can actually figure out your phenotypic ratios that way. And when you're done, your phenotypic ratios will be uh, about 3 eighths or 6 out of 16 are going to be AB positive, 1 eighth is going to be AB negative, uh, 3 eighths is going to be A positive, and 1 eighth is going to be um, A negative. So those would be your expected outcomes. Um, an easier way to do it is to just use two monohybrid crosses and to multiply your ratios. So for example, uh, let's say again, same scenario, we have uh, someone who's A positive with that genotype and someone who is B positive with that genotype. Um, we could just do two monohybrid crosses. So we can put the A's and B's and O's in one of them and we can put the RH antigen in the other like that and we can fill these out like so and then if we want to find out what's the probability of getting in any particular genotype let's say we want to know what is the odds of getting type AB positive um, I, if by looking in this first Punnett square, I see the chances of being type AB is 2 out of 4, which is 1 half. So there's a 1 half chance of being AB. Um, and then if I look in this bottom Punnett square, I see the chances of being positive is 3 out of 4. And I can just multiply those ratios together um, and get the chances of being both type AB and positive for the RH antigen. And if you multiply that out, it equals 3 eighths, which is what we got. Uh, if we want to do a different one, let's say we want to know what are the chances of being type AB negative. Well, we know from looking in this first Punnett square that we have a half chance of being type AB. Uh, and from looking in this second Punnett square, we have a one-fourth chance of being um, negative. So if we multiply those together, we get one-eighth. Um, and so it's really as simple as that.